Hi guys, this is a, just a quick update. One of my subscribers asked me to go a little bit more in depth in how I notch the front sight on the 1860 Army and 1861 Navy revolver or any of the, the percussion revolvers that have a blade front sight. This would also work on a Remington. Okay, And so they wanted me to go more in depth about how I adjust that. First off, let me bring you up here to the board and I'll show you what we're talking about as an overview. Okay, here's the barrel. Here is my front sight. Okay, they're normally this graceful hump coming over. And as I've said before, the problem with that of using it for a target sight for precise shooting is the curve reflects light willy-nilly. It's whatever the light source is around you reflects it. It was great when it was designed in combat for a shiny dot out there you put on a target at point blank range, much like we think of an aim point or something today, and it was for very fast shooting. But it was not in uh, very good for a precision target shot. It was just a shiny dot on the end barrel and you pointed that. They didn't really use a rear sight in combat, it just pointed and pulled the trigger. And so therefore they shot instinctively, okay? We're wanting to do accuracy because I need to shoot small target up close with it, okay? So what I do is this. On the actual hump of the side itself, right here. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is eliminate the rounded top. So the very top up here, taking out minimum gear, I'm just going to flat top it just like that because that crest is going to reflect light. I want it flat across the top, okay? Even on the Remington, I'll simply take the file and make it flat. I don't want to reduce the height no more than I have to, but just simply flatten it off, okay? Then back here on the back, the part that's reflected to me, I'm only going to be using the top quarter of the sight. So I'm going to come in right there and I'm going to produce a notch that comes down and back like that. So it's a notch in the sight like that. Now what that means is when I'm looking at it, I'm only using that top point of the sight. So it's flat on top, it's flat on the two sides, and it's flat on that. And it looks a lot like a modern cartridge sight picture, okay? That allows me to have a flat edge facing toward me, and it's not going to reflect light in some odd way. So it's more like a modern target, what we call a partridge sight, okay? Now, one slight advantage is I will also slightly undercut it. That means the face of that notch, I don't want it truly vertical. I want it slightly recessed at the bottom. Again, so there's no shiny. It's almost just a grunt in the shadow, okay? Now let me show you the sight on Stormborn. Let it focus. Okay. Now you see right here that little notch how the back of this sight, I've made it flat and it's flat topped across the top. It's slightly undercut and that what what gives me a very clear sight picture. Okay? Now on my 1860 I just got, alright, you can see there's a little notch right there in the sight itself. That's all I need. It doesn't have to distract from historical accuracy. But I flat topped the top of this hump up here so it's flat. Or at least it's beveled away that I'm not going to see shiny reflected light. And then the actual apex where it's actually going to be the sight picture tip that I'm going to be looking at has got that undercut notch in it and that's going to give me an improved sight picture. Okay, here's my 58 Remington. As you can see I have flattened off the top of the sight and then on the back of the sight I put, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, a couple of little nick notches. Those are for sighting for range. In the Remington reverse what I do with the Colt. The Colt I put the marks on the hammer uh, which is the rear sight. With the Remington what I do is I put reference marks on there is how much of the front sight I stick up. 
is what I do. So buried all the way at the bottom of the groove, that's my short range. Moving up to the next notch, that's the next range. Moving up to the next notch, that's the next range. I use the front sight to cant the barrel up as opposed to the back. It's kind of backwards, but it works. Okay. But as you can see, what I've done there is I have flattened that sight and flattened off the back edge and slightly undercut it for the same reason. <clears throat> and now just for historic reference on this 1911 style, you see how the back of the sight is flat, how the sight slopes away so that only the very tip right here is what's actually being used for sighting. That's what this is doing right there. I'm duplicating this on a cap and ball revolver. Now, how am I getting this done? I'm taking a file and what I'm doing is first I take the gun, I put it in a vise or something that's not going to move, I tape the barrel if I'm worried about marring the finish, and most files have a smooth non-tooth side and a tooth side. This one has teeth on both sides, but there are files that you can find that's got a smooth on one side. That keeps you from scratching, okay? Put the smooth side. Now, I'm going to take my thumbnail, and I'm going to mark or I'm going to put a, a spacer of some kind there to say I don't want to go any deeper. I just want to do the very tip. I'm then going to sit the edge of that file there on the back side and do a simple forward and back until I create the beginning of the shelf. Okay. It does not have to be a great deal. It's just something that I can then put my file up there and gently go back and forth. I usually use my thumbnail as something to write on, okay? But I have also used uh, uh, wooden sticks, tongue depressors, or even a thin piece of cardboard up there as a spacer. I only need the top tip of that side. I don't need the whole side, just the top tip. And so I take it and at 90 degrees, making sure the barrel is good and secure, I stay at 90 degrees or as close as I can and I go back and forth until I eat into the sight itself. That causes that little notch shelf that you saw here on the 1860. That notched shelf right there gives me just a tip and a nice clear sight picture. And it gives me a very repeatable sight picture. Uh, where I came up with this, I read a lot of Elmer Keith and McGivern and stuff like that, and they talked about how the, in the early 1900s and the late 1800s and early 1900s, you find a lot of Smith & Wessons that have this rounded front sight, looks like a half of a nickel sitting up there. And that quite often you would also find a lot of single action armies that had been reworked and they'd have part of a Mexican peso cut and replacing the front sight because it was silver looking and it was shiny and it was easier to pick up in low light at speed. And this was for people that were shooting fast and dirty up close. It was a shiny dot. You just put the dot on the target. You were so close, you didn't have to worry about windage elevation. You just put the dot on them and you were on target. Okay. Well, McGivern and them talked about how, it, but it was a lousy site for target work. And so they started making a more sharpened, almost like a shark fin out of it where they would cut in and they would flat top it and make this shark fin which later became the partridge side or the partridge site whatever you want to pronounce it. When I read that in the mid 1970s I wondered if that was one of the reasons I was having trouble grouping with the percussion revolver it was because that shiny silver or that shiny uh, brass sight reflected light different and I would take it out and I would be religiously off of a bench trying to shoot accurately and it hit high left. Next time I'd go out and it hit low right or whatever. And I couldn't figure out what was causing the wandering. And then I began to realize it was the light was different behind me and the, the sight was shiny in a different place. And so when I would center that shiny dot up, it was actually coming from my lower back right. Well, it's the back right corner. Well, next time it's coming from overhead, it's the top of it. Next time it's coming from back here, way back here. And every time the light shifted, what part of that sight reflected at me was different. So I'm moving the front sight to different places. And you've got to be consistent in your sight to be consistent in your accuracy. So I started notching the sights to create a more consistent sight picture. 
I hope this uh, explains your question. And I'm sorry it took me so long to post it. A, a uh, subscriber of mine had asked several times and I kept getting delayed. So, um, if you have any questions or like me to explain it further or something, please leave that below and I'll do my best. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.